edition of The Pastor's Heart. So glad that you could join us today. We are having a great discussion with Pastor Daryl Yarbrough of the Assembly in Warner Robins, and we can't wait to get back into it. It's been such a wonderful thing. Uh, I want to remind you, though, that any time during the course of this program uh, that you feel the Lord prompting you, or if you've got a need... I want you to call our prayer request line, 478-474-3986, or you can email prayer at wgnm.com. This prayer line is, you'll, when you call, uh, you'll get a the voicemail. So just leave your prayer request there. We get these things off weekly, uh, and we will pray for those. Uh, during the open window on Mondays, we pray for these requests. I'm telling you, we don't leave them sitting for months on end because we. this is something we consider a solemn, holy duty to partner with you in prayer. And we stand on the scriptures. So don't we call and asking us to pray for something that, that you should. We had somebody call one time that, uh, you know, this, this woman called saying she and her boyfriend were trying to get pregnant. There's a key. We're not gonna we're not gonna partner with you on something that's not covenant. So uh, you know we'll get the other stuff fixed first, and then we'll once you're married, then we'll partner with you all you want on that kind of stuff. So just understand, we stand on the word of God with these things, and we 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 trust in the Lord. We know He knows what He's doing, but we will pray for you. Uh, we will not just for you, but with you. We're coming alongside and helping you on those kind of things. So 478-474-3986, prayer at WGNM.com. Speaking of WGNM.com, we stream our signal there. Uh, and it's we have done some uh, really great work to increase the quality of that stream. Uh, and you can see that on WGNM.com. There's a watch live button. There's also a uh, donate button if you want to partner with WGNM. And then also, I've been talking to you about it all week, the CTN app. And it is a phenomenal tool. Again, this is free. You go and download it from the app store of your choice. Uh, and then uh, the two that I use are the, uh, the Apple store and the Roku store. Uh, I'm telling you, it is a wonderful thing. And then I even go through it all the time and see the streams for the other. Uh, you can get Lifestyle, which is one of our whole other networks that we do uh, that hopefully is coming to uh, our broadcast uh, soon. Uh, and we would uh, we can't wait for that to happen, but it's going to be a, a you get all sorts of stuff when you go in there. You'll have to go check it out. Just go check it out. I can't just sit here and tell you about it all the time. I could talk about it for 30 minutes. So anyway, go get that app and you'll be blessed. Our guest this week is Pastor Daryl Yarbrough from the Assembly. I'm so glad that you got to be with Thank us. Thank you, and we appreciate that. Rem. Appreciate you having a prayer line for people. It makes a lot of difference when you get people. Uh, coming in covenant with you in prayer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We, I appreciate you doing it. Oh, no problem. We we take that so seriously. Amen. Um, now, if you know, we, we get every single one of them off of there uh, and pay attention. Now, we do have to understand them. <laughs> I understand. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but we pray, and, we, and even if we can't stand, we'll pray for that person. Um, but we want to, you know, that's just something we love to do. That's, yeah, uh, we, that's awesome. we believe in the power of prayer. And then, too, the, the live prayer show we do on Mondays, um, the open window, uh, is, has, we have seen so many things happen I'm through sure. that program. Uh, we love doing that program. It's just a, it's a joy. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Assembly of Warner Robins. Assembly of Warner Robins is a great church, a wonderful body of believers. Um, just a beautiful place right off the, uh, the freeway there of 75 and uh, exit 146, about a mile down on the left. And uh, on Watson Boulevard, 6040 Watson Boulevard. Thank you for letting me talk about it. It's a great place. Uh, we have so many wonderful people. Uh, just a, uh, we're, we're just growing. God is blessing. I feel spoiled. God has been very kind to me. I feel like I'm God's favorite child right now. <laughs> I feel like if uh, God had a refrigerator, my picture would be on it with yeah. a magnet. You know, that's, uh, he's been very good to us. And we're very humbled and thankful to be a part of that great church and uh, just excited. We've got so many wonderful opportunities uh, for, for anyone interested. Uh, if you're looking for a church home, we would be so uh, uh, happy to have you come by and check us out. And uh, you can check us out online, theassemblyga.org. 
and uh, you can kind of get a feel of what we do. We've got to archive sermons and streams and all kind of things for you there. So I encourage you to check it yeah. out. You know, years ago, I um, we were looking for a master control operator uh, here at the station, and um, uh, I called Richard Asbell, the, the executive pastor there, and. and uh, uh, I said, hey, do you happen to have anybody who might, you know, fit the bill for this? He says, I've got exactly the right person for you. So he sent us this uh, this resume, and, and uh, Dwayne became a... Um a master control operator for us for a long time awesome. uh, and was a wonderful thing. So we, we're very connected. That's how when I say we're connected with this church, we are connected with the church. And, yes. and uh, um, until he there was a he had an opportunity to take a position that was a, a better position for he and his family. But and we still miss him. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> I won't. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll just keep it between us and the right. people watching the program. Right. But um such a such a blessing, and just and then not just he, but uh, uh, there's several other people that I know from the from the assembly, uh, and have had uh, long term relationships with several of them, and the, the people there. I just tell you, the people there are some incredible people. And you'll if you're looking for a church home, I want you to take the opportunity. Just put it on your the if you've got a checklist of we want to check this and this and this, put the assembly on your list. Uh, uh, the great, and then also I want to just highlight real quick. I feel like we need to celebrate recovery. Yeah, uh, Tuesday nights. Yes, we have a recovery way, a program, kind of like a 12-step program mm -hmm. on Monday nights. Tuesday nights is Celebrate Recovery. Mm -hmm. So there's another opportunity for people to get grounded. And uh, if you have any hurts or habits or hang-ups, as they like to say, it doesn't have to be addictions or anything like that. It could be grief or divorce recovery or just simple depression. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people there that you can reach out to that will love on you and walk with you. And I like to always use the scripture, you know, two are better than one. Right. And uh, it's better to walk with someone than to walk alone. You don't have to isolate yourself. So we have a lot of opportunities like that to uh, come alongside you and encourage you, like our connection groups. We've got close to 35-ish connection groups there mm -hmm. that, uh, from I mean, that meet sometimes once a week or once a month. Right. Yeah, you can find what you're looking for, I promise you. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a great uh, a great place, and I want to, uh, uh, you know, and I say that all the time when I have a pastor's, on the pastor's heart, but here's the reason why. I carefully select the people I want on the pastor's heart. The Lord told me, hey, you're a gatekeeper for this program, and so when I bring somebody on board, I, I feel confident in the church will welcome you. So you. Uh, please understand that. I want to get into... The prodigal son. Yes, you know, we've been talking about this and started out, you know, we saw a boy wanting what was not really rightfully his because the father hadn't passed away and he didn't like where he was. He didn't like what was going on. So he took his inheritance, his possessions, and he left. And we see the Bible says he squandered it with the, his prodigal living, uh, wasteful living. And we find him in a pig pen eating with pigs, something that uh, he probably should have never done. The Bible says he went to a far country. He joined himself. He came in covenant with people he should have never been in fellowship or relationship with in the first place to that extent. Mm -hmm. And then we see him that he lost everything, and now he's working in a, in a place he should have never worked. And he finally gets so down that he's eating in a place he should have never eaten in. But, you know, I find a scripture that really spoke to me when I was reading this. It's verse 16. It says, And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. But listen to this. And no one gave him anything. You know, it's pretty bad to be in a place in your life when no one wants to help you. Mm -hmm. And that's the condition he had gotten himself in. He lost his reputation. He lost everything he had. He made bad decisions. He was looked at as a very bad person now because he basically said, I wish my father, my parents were dead. He had left his community. He had left the faith that he had. Uh, he squandered everything. He was, he was out partying and living it up and living in lifestyles that at that day were viewed as uh, just very disgraceful, uh, respecting his parents, that kind of stuff. And we find him at the point where there's, there's just really no more bottom to hit. I mean, when you're eating with animals and you're eating what they eat and no one wants anything to do with you, how do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. I go back to the scripture, though, Rip, that the Bible says in Proverbs 22:6, train up a child in the way that they should go. 
And when they are old, they will not depart from it. And that was very important for this young man. The influence of a father is so important. And maybe you don't have the influence of a physical, biological father in your life. But you've got the influence of a heavenly father that loves you and won't leave you for anything if you'll come to him. Sometimes it's very difficult for some that have gone that way. Uh, and they have to rectify situations in their life. I've got a young girl that, um, I call her a young girl, she's, she's old enough to be my daughter, but when we were in uh, Orange County pastoring many years ago, uh, her, her father uh, violated her in a, in a very horrible way, and it just destroyed the family. I, I remember watching this family rip walking to my church, this man and woman and two precious little girls walking through the door, just a picturesque family, and then years later when she's a teenager, uh, they're coming back on a trip, and he violates her in a horrible way, and, and it just blows the family up. And I watch this girl sit in my office and just cry uncontrollably and saying, I don't have a father anymore. And I remember looking at her now, and I said, you know, I'll do what I can, uh, but, you know, you, I'll try to be a dad to you. And from that moment on, she started calling me dad. She never called her biological father dad again. She always mm -hmm. called him by his first name. But I remember one day, Rip, she came to me and she said, my biological dad is dying of cancer. What do I do? My mom kind of wants me to go see him, but I don't know if I can. I said, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, I'm a pastor. People are looking for me to, an to answer their questions, yeah. you know. But what do you say to a person who's been violated like that? It's, it's not that easy to get over, especially when it's your parent. And uh, I said, well, you know what? You pray and God will help you. She said, would you go with me? And I said, absolutely. So I walked with her down the hall, and Rip, I, I saw, if I've ever seen Jesus in skin, I saw him on that girl that day. Mm -hmm. I stood at the door, and she walked into her father, and she walked up to the bed, and they had a chat, and the next thing you know, tears are flowing, and he's begging her to forgive him, and she does, and it's just a miracle of all miracles. I was able to do that funeral when he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to see the reconciliation that only God can bring in a situation like that. Now, she never stopped. She never called him father again. She yeah. never called him dad, but, but there was forgiveness, which was a big step. Yeah. And to this day, she still calls me dad, and she's married to a wonderful, I always said former Marine, but I've been told by the military, yeah. once a Marine, <laughs> always, always a Marine. <laughs> they have four beautiful kids, yeah. and they're in ministry today. Praise God. And, you know, uh, I'll text every now and then, and, and she will always end it, love you, Dad, you know. And uh, to me, when you train your children up, at least it's good to know there's a way back. And this guy got to the place where no man would give to him, the Bible says. Nobody wanted to do anything for him. They wanted nothing to do with him. And yet, the Bible says some of the greatest words, he came to himself. He, he finally reckoned with himself. An NIV version of the Bible says it this way, and when he came to his senses, listen to that. And when he back, to me, I, I, my version would say, and when I began to think straight again. You know, when you begin to put things in proper perspective, when you begin to see things as they really are, the Bible finally realized that he'd been very foolish. He'd made some horrible decisions. He had awakened to how utterly ridiculous and devastating his life had become. He failed as a son, and he was ashamed. You know, when you get into a state of being ashamed, it can, it can stifle you in life. It's almost like fear. Fear is a paralyzer. Fear will paralyze you. Fear shuts you down. And many people, when they get to this point, they're, they're fearful of coming back to the church because they're afraid of what will people think. How can I get around good people now because of where I've been and what I've done? Everybody knows my sin. My dad was known. When I walked away, I was vocal about it. I was, I was in your face about it. How in the world can I make reconciliation now? Mm -hmm. But Rip, evidently, that father did something right. Because if you look in the scripture, that boy said these words, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. Evidently, his father was a generous man. Evidently, his father was called a nobleman for a reason because he was a noble man. Evidently, he was a man of good character. 
and was kind and generous. You know, one of the ways you know you've conquered greed if you're a giver. Uh, giving is always proof that you've conquered greed. And we need to be people, especially the church, be full of compassion and ready to give to people that are in need. You know, once I release something to someone, it's no longer mine, it's theirs. My intention, I believe, is good, and I believe God will bless my gift when I give it in faith like that. Mm -hmm. It's not my job to see what you're going to do with it. Uh, it, it go, it's passed to right. you. So if right. I gave you something, now it's yours. Right. My job was to listen to God and hear his voice and give. Right. So God, evidently, this, this, uh, this, this father instilled into his sons at least a ethic of work and life that he shook himself. And when he began to think rationally, right. he, he realized, I can get back to my dad. I noticed something. He, he was a servant who was starving. Yeah. He aspired now, once he came to his senses, to be a servant again. You know, maybe my dad will hire me as a servant. The, but, and he says that the servants had plenty to spare. Mm -hmm. So sometimes maybe your condition depends on who you're serving. Mm. Yeah. Are, where are, what, which, whose house are you in? Yeah. Where are you serving? Your perspective changes mm -hmm. when your life changes. Absolutely. You know, uh, we. Uh, I remember when Chris and I started out. I've been married 29 years. I'm going to tell you. Uh, I remember when we started. We didn't have anything. I remember their first house we rented. It was a. I don't. It was a dump. We and a guy gave. This guy was a Jewish businessman. So I mean, he knew what he was doing. He was, had a big old cigar. And I remember the day we rented the house. He was showing it to us. He said, "I'm going to give a bargain to you kids." It was a three bedroom house, and we had no kids. And, you know, but it, I mean, when we moved in, Rip, we didn't have anything. We didn't have furniture. We had nothing. We borrowed one of those big old heavy metal tables from the church and, and steel chairs. That was our <laughs> custom dinette set, you know. <laughs> and we had a pallet in the, in the master bedroom as a bed. We didn't even have a mattress. We had cardboard boxes for furniture to put clothes right. in, you know. And uh, so those were the days. But you know what? It really didn't matter. I remember a romantic night for us when we were busted. We didn't have any money. I got a Domino's pizza and a candle. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, and uh, Dr. Didn't Pepper. There? My wife loves Dr. <laughs> Pepper, so I was I was doing good, you know. <laughs> and I look at where we are now, and and I had to build an extra garage to put all the junk I have in 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 it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can live without a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been said that. A person can live uh, two, maybe two and a half weeks without uh, food. Uh, we've been told you could probably live five, seven days maybe without water. You can live maybe three to five minutes without air. But nobody lives without hope. Nobody. Mm -hmm. you got to have hope to live in this life. And so many people have been devastated by the world and the effects of others in their life that they just don't have any hope anymore. But as you said, this boy said, my dad has servants that are treated better than this. So evidently, you know, his dad was a good businessman. Yeah. His dad had a good name. He knew that if he would treat his employees like that, then at least he could go back and maybe be an employee and serve. And uh, so the Bible said he began his journey back. You know, that's important. Everyone has a journey in this life. And I want to talk to somebody today that... You know, maybe your journey's taken you places you never expected to go. I want to tell you, there's been times in my own life that because of my own uh, stubbornness, uh, I had to go down roads I wish I never went down. Uh, sometimes we've allowed pride to get in the way or the wrong influence or even the wrong desires. And boy, you can bottom out so quickly. I'll never forget the time I walked the halls at night at 3 in the morning wondering, God, how are you going to get me out of this? I can remember that. It took me eight months just to catch my breath. I was going through such a horrible time in my life. And I can remember wondering, uh, counting not, not the hours, the minutes, the seconds of days. Rip, I had to compartmentalize sometimes my days just to get through a day. Mm -hmm. And that is so important to have the right people in your life. I was so grateful for my pastor at that time who would be an encourager to me and call me and lift me up and, and just be there. 
You know, it's important sometimes for someone just to be there. They don't have to say a lot, but just knowing that they're on your side, in your corner. And evidently, this young man knew that his father was a fair person. And if he could just get back to his father, maybe he could just be a servant. Well, there's a whole lot more to this story than just being a servant. But the good news is he had the right perspective. Mm -hmm. He finally realized if his dad was so good to those servants, then maybe he would be that good to me. At least I would have shelter. At least I would have a good meal. At least I could earn an honest living. At least I could be held valuable again. Even servants were held valuable. You know, some people look at that and they say, well, the servants are basically employees. They, they were held in high esteem. I mean, you earned your living. You, you, you helped produce. And this boy began his journey back. And, you know, in uh, one of the most interesting uh, things which happened in the Gulf War was Allied forces took the territory they wanted without many casualties. If you remember the Gulf War, one, on one occasion, a small band of British soldiers came across an Iraqi stronghold. And the British knew that they were heavily outnumbered, but they were confident that with their superior weaponry that they could win the battle. They also knew that if the battle took place, some of their men would be injured or even killed as uh, they might incur casualties on the Iraqi side as well. But suddenly without warning, the Iraqi soldiers began to come out of their foxholes and surrender. So 20 British men took 200, over 200 Iraqis as prisoners because they simply walked out and gave up. And there's a reason why. The Iraqis had not eaten for days. They were hungry. Listen to this. And so you don't have much of a stomach for a fight when you're starving to death. And the second thing is they weren't getting paid. So listen to this. Nobody works well when they're worried about their money. And here they were worried about how am I going to feed my family? How am I going to survive? So they came out and they gave up. And in the same uh, 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 way as Christians, no one of Jesus and his family should be without things they need. When you come to the Lord, you're going to know that he cares and he loves you and he'll provide. He makes a way, the Bible says, where there doesn't seem to be a way. Psalm 107 says he's an ever-present help in the time of distress. That's the kind of God we serve. He's a personal God. He's intentional. God has no hidden agenda. He wants the best for you. And all we have to do is surrender. Isn't that amazing? How if we just surrender, a lot of our battles cease and a lot of victories are won and they're right. done because he's already won it for us. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so grateful that God is who he is. He's all powerful, omnipotent. He's all knowing, om omniscient. And he's everywhere at once, omnipresent. He has the ability to make a way for you if you'll just call on him. So this prodigal looks and he says, I can do better. I can at least be a servant. And so, you know, I'm just grateful that he had the opportunity of knowing that his father cared enough that he could possibly find love again. Right. So he begins to make his way home. Well, you know, and I think, too, one of the things we talk about the nobleman again, there's always that he... Later we find that, the, that he was looking for his son. But there's always, when we have a prodigal, when we're dealing with a prodigal, if we're the father, let's put ourselves in the father's position for a second. There was a structure, you know, a family home, mm -hmm. the, the, the property they had there. There was a structure. And one of the reasons we, we get structure is to, there's a place. Mm -hmm. That there's a place to come back to. Sure. That there's provision for that and so sometimes when we as we we're, we're so busy trying to uh, as we as we look at our own finances we you know we're, we're all trying to barely get by and we never think about the fact okay I need to start establishing some some structure some right. financial structure right and I think there's something to be said that that's part of the blessing that you mentioned about giving and about knowing that God's going to take care of us and that uh, it's not just, you know, it may look like, because a lot of people say, oh, well, he's just rich, he's, you know, but there's structure. Mm -hmm. There's fa It's not just for me. I have two sons. You have three daughters. Mm -hmm. What we build up while we are generous and we give, 
what we have, we build up a structure. There, we need to have a place to live. Absolutely. We need to have food on the table. And so we establish these things for, and then you, you get emergency funds mm-hmm. and savings. And there's nothing wrong with any of those things because the purpose is of all of that stuff is to provide a place. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if, you, if we do deal with a prodigal child, if we, that, that we have some stuff uh, that's a that's a place for them. That they're, um, my parents even told me when, even though I wasn't spiritually a prodigal, I was away mm-hmm. and trying to do some ministry stuff uh, in another state. And uh, one of the things my parents were able to say is, anytime you want to come home, mm-hmm. even if just for oh, a visit. Yeah. Yeah. We will help you get home. Mm-hmm. And again, I wasn't in a, at that time, I wasn't in a, I wasn't in a prodigal state, but I, I was in the state of Florida. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> um, but I was in a state that was different from the state that my parent lives in, yeah. as far as the, the, the geographical state. And so there's, there's something to be said about the blessing of the Lord oh, yeah. on a family, oh, on yeah. a home. And it, it could be even your uh, adopted family. Like mm-hmm. you, you said, you've got a, a, a daughter who's, not, you know, biologically yours. Right. So there's something to be said about that blessing, about being the nobleman, mm-hmm. about being the person to have some structure. And I think part, you know, they say that one of the things, one of the key things about poverty or the uh, uh, things that prevent poverty is a Two parent household, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, and we talked. We started the week talking about fatherlessness, right. and one of the things that, and, and and you know what, you may not get all the things this, you know, in this generation, but you set your children up mm-hmm. to go even further with that blessing and and, right. and do the blessing. And I, I, I just look at this as part of this whole story is the blessing of the Lord. Absolutely. So, and we're out of time. <laughs> Well, the next one, we'll sure talk about the ending. Yes, and, yes, we're uh, going to be... It gets good. We're just about to turn a corner, folks. <laughs> uh, you don't want to miss tomorrow's uh, edition of The Pastor's Heart. We love you, and we can't wait to see you tomorrow. We'll see you. <laughs>